What's up, y'all? This is Preston Perry, and this is another episode of Bold TV, where we live and love truth. Let's get right into it. But even though he submits perfectly to the will of the Father, that does not mean that the Father is more God than God. cares about the posture of our hearts when we do apologetics, but he also cares about how we treat people when we do apologetics. Have you mistaken being woke with hatred? So if you guys can remember a while back I did a series on Jehovah's Witnesses teaching you what they believe and how the Bible contradicts what they believe. But on this video you're going to actually see me talking to Jehovah's Witnesses out in the street. I have a conversation with this guy named Anton who was a Jehovah's Witness and we had a very intense but yet respectful conversation about the scriptures and about what God thinks about the scriptures, about Charles Taze Russell and a myriad of other things. One thing I want you guys to notice is how I approached him in the video. The way I approach them is a way that won't allow their guards to be up, but for them to drop their guards in a sense, for me to have a conversation long enough to give them truth. And a lot of times I think when we talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, we immediately hit them on the head with scripture and they feel attacked or they feel like, you know, uh, maybe I should stray away from this conversation and we don't have a conversation long enough to even give them truth. So I try to do a good job of giving them dignity, giving them respect and ease it into the conversation. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Throughout the video, I'm going to be interjecting, explaining some things that might be confusing. Check it out. Have you heard of uh, God's Kingdom before? Is that Spanish copy? Oh no, you got English. Though. Yeah, English. it's free if you if you like it. Okay, I've heard of God's kingdom. What is what about it? So God's kingdom is a, a real government in heaven. Jesus Christ is king. We're ruling as king for a while now, and uh, basically soon that kingdom is going to bring about God's purpose for the earth for mankind. I think I've seen Jehovah's Witnesses before, but I never seen them dressed as nice. You guys dress really oh, really yeah. nice. Oh, uh, we try, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so there's a lot of promises that. Uh, God has for the future. Okay. It's all outlined in the Bible. Most of them have come true already. Yeah. And so we'll, we try to help people come to see that there's we're living in a special time where the rest of His promises are going to come true too. And He has a whole plan set up of how He's going to do that. And it's all outlined in the Bible. God's wow. Kingdom. Well, I'm a Christian, um, and that's good to, to know that you guys out here talking about God. I believe in the Lord. I keep that's my right. Bible with me, uh, so that's every time I see somebody talking about the scriptures and God, I always want to want to talk to them. I believe yeah. that Jesus is the the true and the living God. Do you, do you guys believe that as well? No, it's a little bit. No, we don't believe he's the true and living God. We believe, um, you know, the, his his father, the one that he prayed to. Yeah. You may have you may remember um, when he was praying before he before he uh, shortly before he died, let not my will but yours take place. When yeah. He was in the garden with his disciples, and um, he prays, and the angel comes and strengthens him. Uh huh. You may remember that. Yeah, I remember so, that. If this cup can pass for me, let it pass. You okay. That? Yeah, I remember that. So, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that person he's praying to, we believe he's the one and true God, one okay. and only true God. Okay. Well, well. So what I believe is, as a, as a Christian, I believe that that Jesus is. Uh, not the same person as the Father God, but we believe yes. that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all equally God, but they're, they're, they're different in person. That's what Christians believe. So I don't believe that the, the that, that the Jesus of the Bible is the same as the, the Father, but we believe that there's one God. Different, who's, different persons, same God. Same God. Yes. Yeah, so that's what the, that's what the Trinity. Uh, I believe teachings when it says that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Yeah. Well, you're exactly right. That is what the Trinity teaches. The Bible but. teaches. That's, that's what the Bible says in John. It's, there are three that bear record in, in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Yes, I understand. Yeah, that's that's um that's a very that's a very common or popular scripture in the I think so you read the King James Version, right? I read the King James Version. I, I think I have a, I have an ESV version with me right now. Uh, my, my, so my question, just curious, if you don't believe that Jesus is God, who do you believe Jesus was? We believe Jesus is God's only begotten Son. Okay. He so came, before he came to earth, before he came to, to the earth, who was he? He was um, God's only begotten Son, the firstborn of creation. So I guess before God created anything else, He created His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's a, there's a lot of scriptures I really so, like to show you. So you believe that Jesus was created? You believe that he was the firstborn? 
Yes, there's a there's a scripture I can show you. Yeah, so, show, can you show me that, please? Oh, sure. So um, I'll show you just two scriptures, and that should probably explain exactly why. Let me pull out my Bible. Yeah, sure. W what scripture are you taking me to? Colossians, chapter one and verse fifteen. Okay. Oh, he's the firstborn of all creation. Yes. Okay. Firstborn of all creation. That's right. Yeah. And it says, and we know this is talking about Jesus, of course. Yeah. Because um, you know, in the context. 13. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely believe yeah. that uh, Colossians says that he's the firstborn of all the creation. He was the, uh, all things were created through him and for him. Yes. Right. Uh, and, and notice here too that this is something that a lot of people will miss out first glance over. But it says that he's the image of the invisible God. The image of the invisible God. I think. So, and so if you, if we, you Chris, we, uh, I believe that as well. I don't mean to cut you off. No, no. Go I ahead. believe that as well. I believe that Christ is the one who has come and made the Father physically known. This is the reason why I said it. This is the reason why he's called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel in the in the original language means God with us, right? Yes. Uh, uh, so, um, but the word firstborn there, like, do you, yeah. you, do you, you do believe that the word was written in Koine Greek, right? Oh, yeah, it was, this this part of it was, writ was written in Greek. So, so my question to you is the word firstborn there in the original Greek, uh, if you look up the word firstborn, what it means, it means for total cause. P-R-O-T-O-T-O-K-O-S. And the word for total cost means preeminent one. One who is preeminent over all things. Yeah. So depending you, on the context, they'll take on a, you know, well, the, the right meaning. Yeah, I know. And I think that's I think that's what it means in a proper context. Because yeah. if you look up the word firstborn in, in the Greek, for total cost means one who is preeminent. That's what it means in, in, the, in the Greek language, the, the language that this is written in. Yeah. Not, it doesn't mean a fifth. Okay, so, so for, I'll give you an example. For example, can you turn to Psalms 89, 27? Sure. Um, can I show you one, one other point? Yeah. Uh, right? And then go yeah, to Psalms. But, um, so this point about him being the image of the visible God. Yes. Him being the firstborn of all creation. If you imagine, you know, if you look into the image, image like in the mirror, that, if that mirror is reflecting your image. Yeah. But that mirror isn't you. You are you. Are you. The Bible uh, makes a, a lot of mention of how God is, uh, that he's invisible. A lot of, you know, John said himself, no one has seen God yeah. at all. He mentioned it in the Gospel, John, and also in his letter to Christians, John. Yeah. Because no one has seen God. But John himself has been, had dealing with Jesus many times. So the reason why we believe firstborn in this scripture means literally firstborn of all creation is because when you couple that with the fact that he's also called the only begotten son of God. You know what only begotten means? It's like, um, like we're all begotten of our parents. At one point, we didn't exist until, you know, we were conceived and then born. Yes. So that's, so repeatedly, I, that's what it mentions about Jesus Christ, too. Can I, can I explain something to you right quick? Well, oh, sure. let, can, I, can I say something? Yeah. So, so he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over yeah. all of creation. So... Two, two observations that I want to make right here is that we see the word firstborn isn't literal because we know Christ wasn't born in heaven, right? They didn't procreate in heaven, right? So he wasn't physically born, right? Yeah, this, that's you, just you, to you, help you, us understand right. the concept of God creating his son first. Gotcha. So the, the point I'm trying to make is, right, we, he, wasn't, he wasn't physically born, right? I think, yeah. you, I, I think what you're alluding to is that the firstborn means that he was physically created. Um, but it doesn't, it says the firstborn over all creation. It doesn't say that yeah. he was created. It says he's the firstborn. Well, the firstborn of all creation, yes. Yeah, so, so my, what I was saying with the, with the word prototokos, if you look up the original Greek, prototokos means preeminent one, one who is preeminent over all things, right? Um, this is the reason why it says all things were made through him. This is why in yeah. John 1, it says, um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made, right? Because he made all things. So because he made all of creation, that's the reason why he is preeminent over all of creation. That's why he's the total cost over all of creation. There's so a if, lot of reasons you, why he would be, you know, over. It's being the first one directly created by God would also, you know, the first, like... But, but, that, but I, I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, I think, I don't think I this... Understand. I don't think this scripture is pointing to his creation. It's not one particular scripture why we believe that Jesus is... The first, you know, firstborn or was created by his father Jehovah. Yeah, it's many scriptures, and it's the understanding of the whole context of the Bible that why we 
come to see who Jesus Christ is. So like, can you turn to Psalms 89, 27? Cause it, sure, it, I will. But the word firstborn. Um, I understand. Uh, I I know exactly what you're talking about. What, what scripture? Okay. You need, what I'm scripture? Already, I'm already in this. So Psalms 89, 27, it says that King David is the firstborn over all of the kings. You see the same language, yeah. uh, right? That's but Hebrew language. Yeah, but is he the firstborn king? He wasn't the first, I mean, like, was he first the first literal, literal king, you mean? Yeah, was he the first created king? Was he the first king God created? Yes. No, he wasn't. So, but, so we see the same language being used with King David because that word in this time means for total. If you just type in for total cost, P R O T O T. Those are the Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures. I'll, I'll try, I'll, I'll no, well, It sounds interesting. I like that's, that. That's, that's actually a, a Greek word. Like, yeah. The New Testament was written in Koine Greek, right? But so the, the, the Hebrew scriptures and Psalms was a different. It was a Hebrew word. Yeah, like it was Hebrew. Yeah, the Old Testament was written yeah. in, in, in Hebrew. So it's a little, a little bit of. Yeah, but but it, but it, in the first century period, right? The the word. Yeah, got gotcha. Firstborn meant meant preeminence. So has anyone shown you from um, from the Bible why we, you know, we, uh, why we teach exactly? What who Jesus Christ is, because that is a that is a pretty. I big, would love for you to explain difference. it to me. I would I would love to just learn and, and explain yeah. it to me if you. I got one. Other, I got one, maybe two other scriptures that ex completely explain our our understanding of the scriptures on this. Okay. On this point. I've had a talk with a Hebrew Israelite, and he didn't want to answer none of none of my questions. So oh, really? the fact that you answered my questions, I I really appreciate it. I don't want to just yeah. argue for arguing's sake. I no, really no, appreciate it's, it. It's it's. At the very least, um, we would come to understand at least why we view things you know like for example if, if at the at the very end of it at least you understand why we believe yeah why, you know and I, so I respect you guys and what you guys are doing that's the biggest iPad I've ever seen in my life but this scripture here this is something um this is a, a, a big one for a lot of us this is a really nice one in John 20 verse 17 Talking about Jesus, you know, this is the resurrected Lord Jesus now. That's uh -huh. why it's very powerful. Uh huh. John 20, 17. So this is when Mary, he, she finds him and then she grabs him, doesn't want to let him go. But Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go and tell my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mm. So a few points here. Jesus clearly states that he has a God. Yeah. And, you know, Jesus, when he was on earth, he worshipped God many times. Can I tell you, can I tell you my, my opinion of that scripture? So, yeah, here, sure. um, we, we, I believe that, that, that God is, is triune, right? So, that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, when, when Jesus recognizes his Father, he's not saying that he's... It's, 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 it's nothing wrong with him acknowledging that the Father is God. Just because Jesus acknowledges that the Father is God, yeah. it doesn't automatically disqualify, disqualify but he says him that he, as God. It says that he's his God. So so I, I believe that the Father and the Son has referred to each other as God. Haven't the, they? No. The, they the Father is never called so God. Which, so before Jesus came to the earth, who what did he exist? What did he exist as in heaven? Yeah. He was much like another angel in heaven. Much uh, I mean we can't I wasn't there to just tell you exactly what he looked like. He was an angel in heaven? He was much like an angel in heaven, yes. He was the firstborn of all creation. So before God created anything else, he created his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, so... And then through his son, what's your, all of the... What's your name again? Anton. Anton. I, I was, I was going to call you Antoine. I didn't want to get it right. wrong. Can you turn to Hebrews 1.5 for me? Sure. Hebrews 1.5. That's my favorite book. It's one of my favorite books, too. But um, also in that scripture, it mentions that he says, go to my brothers. And we also know that God doesn't have brothers either. So how can Jesus call his disciples brothers if he's not also a created being just like his brothers were? Because he, he, because he came into, to live in the flesh. So when he, when he became a human, he had brothers. And, and Jesus is our brother, right? Because he's a, he's, a son of, he's a son of the Father. And he's our, yeah. he's our brother, but that doesn't but it, mean he's not it makes God. It, it makes it powerful we, we, because he was created just like everyone else was. But, but, okay, with all due respect, Antoine, you really haven't shown me where it says he was created, but let's get to okay. it. Because if I'm wrong... I got, one, I got one other one that I can show you where it's besides that creation one. Before, got it. Besides the uh, firstborn one, there's one other. Okay, but look, let me uh, go to Hebrews right quick. Sure. Uh, you said Hebrews 1.5? 
Yeah, right here. It says this. It says, um, it says, for, for which of God's angels did I ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be to him a father, and he should be to me a son. So here it says that God has never told any angel, today I have begotten you. He yeah. says he has never told an angel, today I will be to him a son. But he did beget his angels, though. Well, because the angels weren't around before God created them. Yeah, but this, this, this is what I'm saying, though. Right here it says, for which of for which of the angels did God ever say a rhetorical question, yeah. you are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when That's he brings right. his firstborn into the world, referring to Jesus, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, capital G, is forever and ever, and the scepter of your brightness is the scepter of your kingdom. So there, right here, the Father calls Jesus God, capital G. What, what, what verse were you talking about Begin, there? The uh, beginning of 8. It oh, says, but... Uh, about what, which son? But even in verse 9, it, in both of ours, it mentions that that's why God, you're God. So God, 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 the, the God anoints Jesus, and Jesus acknowledges the God as God, as his but God. But here, here, here's, here's the thing. But about the son, he says... God yeah. is your, your throne. throne. Yeah, no, God is but see, throne. that's see. Here's the thing. God gave I, Jesus the kingdom. No, no. See, here's the thing. This is the only translation in the whole world that says this. Well, no if other. I, if I read it in, in it, yours, was yeah. Jesus. Mine says this is the ESV, but I can show you in every other translation. It says, "But of the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is it's forever and ever." If you look at the King James version, yeah. it says, "Your throne, O God, is forever and ever as well." Yes, I understand what you're saying, but that doesn't automatically say that. Like, for instance, you can no, it is, you can I, use those scriptures. Like, let me, let, let me I'll give you just a quick example. Anton, I, I think it's I think it's kind of clear, right? It says, "But of the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever, yeah. and the scepter of Your rightness is the scepter of Your kingdom." If you look down right here, um, you can see I studied this because it's highlighted. It says, "And You, O Lord, laid the foundations of the earth." From the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hand so it says that jesus created heavens and the earth it doesn't quite say that well but i can i can let's I read can, it I, let's read it yeah, it I says can. it says are you gonna your throne oh god is forever and ever no no i'm just checking up on you oh okay, okay great yes. yeah I, was you you that i called maybe I called, you called me I, I called somebody because the rain started coming down oh, okay but yeah. um it says yep, yep. i'm sorry what's your name I'm Count, man. Preston, you. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So one thing I think is important for us to know is that when we talk to Jehovah's Witnesses out in the streets, typically there is one leader. Sometimes it might be two leaders. And the other Jehovah's Witnesses that are present um, typically are quiet. They don't speak much. And that's what's happening right here. As you see, I'm talking to Anton, but there are three other Jehovah's Witnesses who don't say anything. And the reason why that is is because the Jehovah's Witnesses typically have people with them who are in training. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses who are learning how to evangelize and to preach God's kingdom and all of that stuff. So that's the reason why when I'm talking to Anton, the other Jehovah's Witnesses are not talking at all. But when this main guy, Calvin, walks up, as you can see, Anton starts to look kind of, you know, nervous, and the other Jehovah's Witnesses start to kind of look nervous. And he looks like, man, like, why are you having a conversation with this guy with these trainees right here in front of me? So that's why Calvin takes the Jehovah's Witnesses away, what you're about to see. And I'm just left talking to Anton and his friend for the rest of the conversation. All right. What's your name? I'm Count. Man. Preston. You. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But it says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of your rightness is the scepter of your kingdom, still referring to Jesus. And it also says, and you, O yeah. Lord, laid the foundation of the earth from the beginning. Yeah. Just a little bit. Um, my, my, uh, I, uh, right before, I think we we have to start maybe, wrapping up. But yeah. my whole point with, um, I just wanted to share, the, share this with you, is that there's two... There's a dialogue between two different persons there. Yeah. So um, why does um why does why does Thomas call Jesus God in John? That's actually a it was much like a Hebrew idiom where it's like oh my Lord and my God just like somebody would burst out oh my God. But even though if I say oh my God I'm not well he didn't say oh my God you, when Jesus my... when Jesus when Jesus came back from the dead right yeah. he told him to put his hands on his side and put his hands yeah. on his on in, in his hands. And uh, to believe that he was the risen Christ, and Thomas fell down and said, "My Lord and my God." And then Jesus responds and says, "Thomas, you have believed because you've seen. But blessed are those who 
who haven't seen and yet still believe. Yes. So, he, so Thomas calls Jesus my Lord and my God. Why? Yeah. Um, there's a couple different reasons why. But, like, for instance, one of those is the Hebrew idiom where it's like, oh my, you know, it's a, just trying to get I get that. I get the Hebrew idiom. Like, I, I get that. When, it's, when somebody says, oh my yeah. God. But he didn't say, oh my God. He said, my, my Lord. He made it personal. Yeah. He said, well, my Lord and my, my God. My Lord and my God. An exclamation mark. Yes. So um, when he said, my Lord and my God, was he not worshiping God, Jesus as God? No, did, did he was not. Was he, was he not acknowledging Jesus as his God? No, he was not. So why did he call him God? In fact, for right before that, Jesus told Mary to go tell his brothers, like, go to my brothers, tell them that I have not yet ascended to my God, and to your God, and to my Father and your Father. So he had just gotten that information. I get it. I get it. But well, what I'm saying is, when at that moment, not before yeah. then, at that moment, when he stuck his hands in Jesus' side and stuck his yeah. hands in the in his in his in his uh, stuck his finger in his holes in his hands and he says, "My Lord and my God," and he fell down. Was he not acknowledging Jesus as God? No, he wasn't. So why did he call Jesus God? He didn't call Jesus God. He's like I'm talking about the Hebrew idiom. There's actually a teach number. Teach me of about reasons. that. Can you teach me about that? Yeah, sure. There's a few of them. Like for instance, um, the angel of. The, in the in the Hebrews, the angel of Jehovah. Yeah, that's the that's one of the biggest things about um. The reason why uh, have you heard that name Jehovah before? Yes. Okay, that that name Jehovah. It's the name the, of God. The it's, name of God. It's one of the name of God. The personal name of God. So in this part, we talked about Hebrew idioms. So what an idiom is is something that is not to be taken literal when it is translated into another language. For example. In the English language or in America, we say, eat your heart out. But in some place else, when somebody say, eat your heart out, they might take that literal, like, you really want me to eat my heart out? That makes no sense. So when I asked him, why did Thomas call Jesus my Lord and my God? He's saying that we shouldn't take this literal because he's not meaning it literal. He's saying, oh my God, right, in the Hebrew language. So I knew two things in this situation. One, he kind of made this up. Or two, it was something that he has been taught through the Watchtower organization, but I knew for a fact that he didn't really know how to defend it because it literally didn't make sense. So instead of accusing him or calling him a liar to be argumentative, what I said was, can you teach me about that? And when I asked him, can he teach me about that? Watch what he does. He changes the subject. He didn't call Jesus God. He's like, I'm talking about the Hebrew idiom. There's actually a number teach me of about reasons. That. Can you teach me about that? Yeah, sure. There's a few of them, like, for instance, um, the angel of, the, in, the, in the Hebrews, the angel of Jehovah. Yeah. That's, the, that's one of the biggest things about, um, the reason why, uh, have you heard that name Jehovah before? Yes. Okay, that, that name Jehovah. It's the name the, of God. It's the it's, name of God. It's one of the name of God. It's the personal name of God. Well, yeah, Jehovah. Jehovah uh, and that, that personal name identifies the person alone. Like, that's, um. I'll share, because since we have, we have to leave, maybe I could just leave two, two things with you and maybe give you a little understanding about, you know, why we're very, I guess, adamant about who God is. Yes. But I'll, I'll sh and then I'll share that one about the creation, because I have to get with my friends here. But this one is in a famous scripture here. And in, in that Hebrews, of, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go to the, explain that but um I see no no conflict in, in the reading there I wish I could explain it yeah I, I, a little and, further. I, and I wish I wish we can I wish we had enough time to talk about this Hebrew scripture because I with all due respect I don't really think you answered the question of why the father has said your throne oh God is forever and ever maybe you can answer it for me why yeah, it's, it's, it's a scriptural prophecy so Jesus throne was going to always be established by God so so the father the father was able to call him God the Father's not calling him God. There, this is this is Paul speaking uh, talking to the Hebrews. Got you. But, them, but, th but this is what it says. It says, it says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says. Yeah, your throne, O God. Your throne, O God. But of the Son, he who is he? Who is the he in, in this in this scripture? When it says, but of the Son, he who is he? It's a lowercase he. Yeah. No. But of the Son, of uh, the Son, he says. Yeah. Yeah. So it says. So it says. Let, it says, the father's I mean, never called can, it. We can go into translation. I would say that that's not a very accurate translation of the scripture. Well, it's, I think, well, it I says think it, ours it, is a much 
much uh, more clear. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I did a little research, and the New World Translation wasn't even founded until 19, uh, it's, it's 1951, yeah. right? 1950. Yeah, around the 1950s. So and this, this revived so, one, but so the so the so the so the Jehovah's Witness translation. But there's other translations besides ours that will verify. What, can you can you show me one other translation? Sure. There's the Byington Byington translation. But is that there's, under the Watchtower? No. So I, I've never heard of. We the may Bi print it, like for instance, the Watchtower, like for instance, our organization has printed King James Bibles. We printed new uh, a couple other Bibles. Can you show me another scripture that's, that doesn't that doesn't call yeah. him that but the I think Father? We can both agree that we can't hold such a yeah such a huge thing on one on one scripture. Yeah, if you want to go to other scriptures, we can. And I, yeah. I think I think it's I think it's important to wrestle through these things because one of the reasons why I'm passionate about this is because I, I believe that it's important for people to worship the true and the living yeah. Christ. And if I'm not mistaken, the New World Translation was published in 1951. So what Jehovah's Witnesses are essentially claiming is before 1951, no one had a true no, or have, we, accurate we, translation translation yeah, of the Bible. Accurate enough to receive the truth. So, but so, the thing is with the with our translation, we put God's name back into the Bible. Like there was God's name in the So God's name the, God name God name wasn't in the Bible before the New World Translation? God's name was originally like for instance when Moses and the other prophets were scribing God's word. Uh-huh. They put in that name Jehovah thousands of times. But if you pick up a modern translation, like for instance, this the, one. The King James Version. Yeah, King James. King James took out God's name. No, they didn't. It with, yeah, I can, I can, I can prove it. Well, with, well, uh, well, do you, well, every single time, pictures. every single time you, you see the, the King James Version, right? Capital Lord. Capital Lord. You see the King James Version and you see the word Jehovah, which Jehovah's Witnesses believe was taken out of the Bible. You see, a, you see another name called Yahweh. Yahweh is just another, another way of saying Jehovah. It's just a different pronunciation. Exactly. And that's because in the original. It's like Anton or Antoine. Yeah, just because in the original language, no J's existed. So you see, you see the word Yahweh there. So, the, so technically, Jehovah wasn't taken out of the Bible. It just was, it just wasn't translated into it was, English. It just wasn't. Not only was it Yahweh, translated, Yahweh is. Yah Yahweh, taken, Jehovah is translated into Yahweh in the English. But they translate Jesus' name. Like, for instance, if they took out Jesus' name and just put Lamb or just put Lord, we would have put his name back into so, there as well. This, this, is, this, is, this is probably a, a very hard truth, and I, I don't mean this to disrespect you guys at all, I promise. But the New World Translation has taken more things out of the Bible and added more things I, into the Bible. I understand everything about the New World Translation. So you believe? So you, so you do believe that the New World Translation has added words to the text? For example, in John one one, when it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was no. God," you no. guys, you guys placed the A. You said, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a not God." Not only, not only, not only our organization, but other people in what, past, what other? past history. What other? I think Tins, Tin, Tinsdale, Tinsdale's version also put an A. There's a few other. Um, but in the original Greek text, there's no A. In the original Greek text, there's not an A anywhere. I got but it. We, but we put the A where it needs to be when you so, translate the Bible properly. So, so no. But here's the thing, though. If Whenever the, if, if, something if, if, following if, a definite if, if, article, if the word if the word if the word A wasn't there in the original yeah. Greek text, you can't you can't add a word to make to to. to uh, you can if you want to ac tra ac accurately translate the Bible, like. You know, if you were to do a Anton, a, Anton, let me. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but how do you how do you accurately translate the Bible by by adding a word that is not there in the original language? It, the the yes, way you. I'll, the, I'll tell you. Show me. All right. Like um. So you do you know? Well, that's Even, a big that's a big conversation. But let me just say say this, and I'll leave leave you with this scripture, and then I think we we have to go. But um, was the word other in the origin in in the in the did the word other exist? The word other exists. We don't right? understand Greek. So, and well, we I, didn't, we I, didn't I, speak. I, I, understand, I understand Greek um, to a certain extent because I yeah. study it. Yeah. I study the Greek. Yeah, I understand. But we weren't, you know, raised in the Greek language. Like, we can no, speak don't. it fluently. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, all that stuff. Especially not that, that Coney Greek. But, or that Coin Greek. I forget how you pronounce it. I just but, say um, Koine. Koine Greek. Koine Greek. But anyways... In the Koine Greek, there was no indefinite articles. It was only definite articles. But whenever somebody spoke, everyone understood what they were what they were meaning, because 
that's just how the language is structured back then. But when you want to translate it, like say we want to translate into Chinese, the Bible has to be translated into Chinese. There's a whole nother system of language that you have to switch that over to. So what you need to need to have is the understanding of the idea and also, you know, the truth and then translate into English. So in English, the Greek scriptures has a has inserted other words in there plenty of times. Like in their translation in the in that one, in every Bible translation they insert words all the time. No no to no make it understandable. But, but no, so so what a translation does this is what a translation does. A translation translates something from one language to another. It, Here's the okay. thing. Here's the it thing. It does add words. Like, because I know what translation that is. Like, for instance, when it's talking can about I, a prophet. Can I explain to you? Because I, I didn't finish my thought. I don't, I don't mean right, to cut you off. Sure. So if you if you compare the ESV version to the King James version and to the ASV version, there are words that are different, but they take are, on the but same. But they take on indefinite articles. But they, there. I get it. But they, but the words take on the same meaning. That that if if if, if words are different. Meaning, taking on a different meaning, it is no longer a translation. It means something else. So, in, so for example, in John 1, when it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. When you add an A there, it it, 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 it completely means something else. No I other... Know, yeah. yeah. But, here's but, the that's thing. The, but that's what the Bible... But that's the, when but the, the, the writer, when the writer was writing Anton, that down, Anton, he I, understood what that meant. What writer? The writer of John. So when but, John was writing in the word in, in Greek, in do, being, uh, do you you do know that the that the that the word a did not appear in any Bible until 1951 when the New World Translation was published for that verse for that verse just no, do the that's, research that's not true where that's, where did it, where did it, where did it, where did it exist what Bible did did the word a and John one exist before a, there 1951 was a, there, was, there was a few a few what what, what are the name of those Bibles after the thing is, is that That's, I didn't, didn't, didn't memorize didn't, the name of those Bibles. It didn't exist. It didn't, it didn't exist, Anton. Before yeah, nineteen, yeah, before 1951, the word A in John 1 was never there. The, 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 the New World Translation and the Jehovah's Witnesses added an A because they did not want to accept Jesus as God. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was A, and the Word was God. In 1951, the New, the New World Translation and the Jehovah's Witnesses added an A, and then, it goes on, it quick, and, then it go, and then it goes on to say, all things were created through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Yes, and then, I and then, it, yeah. and then you guys added other. He created all other things. The word other is not even in the all original you, Greek. You to, it's not I can, there. I have the original Greek here. I can show you how this two different Greek words, how they're structured for, I, for the and God I, and for I've for studied God. that. I, I know exactly what you're going to yeah. show me. But so, in okay. the original Greek yeah. text, there is the, the word a and the word other is not there. You guys said he created all other things. And it, it yeah, just didn't did. exist. That's because... It just look, didn't exist. I know, I know what you're saying. I, know, I understand what you mean. I, I completely get you. The only thing is that, you know, I wish I had those other Bibles that I'm talking about. It wasn't, it wasn't, it's not something new. Other translations. Before, for, for instance, when we were doing the studying, the organization, we came across these other translation where other people have also come to an accurate understanding of the actual dynamics of the Greek language and how a when you want to translate something honestly in English you have to put indefinite articles where they're supposed to go and that's clearly grammatically structured talking about he's toward toward God when you when you toward someone you're obviously not that person that you're toward it's like the whole thing is is screaming to have an a put in there but the reason why they don't put the A in, when translating in English a, is because they already believe and, and accept a trinity. And Tom, please hear me, and I don't want to keep you all yeah. day. Please yeah. hear me. Charles Taze Russell oh. added added the A, and the he reason didn't, he, he, didn't he, even, he didn't even well, well, write, well, well, he didn't even write it. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't. That write, didn't come out to the fifties. I get it. I, I get it. I get it. But but it, it, it stemmed from his theology. It so wasn't, I, I know it wasn't just his. Um, uh, isn't Charles Taze Russell the founder of the Watchtower and Track Society? Yeah. yeah, so he's the founder. So even though the New World Translation was published well, in 1950... Our organization is quite, quite a bit hear me out, hear me out, Hear me out what I'm saying. Even, yeah. though the 19, even though the New World Translation was published in the 1950, it still stemmed from Charles Taze Russell's teaching, right? When he first started, um, published his first religious journal in 1871, I believe. 
and he believed that he and he couldn't accept the fact that Jesus was God. So he began to he began to teach that we should put a, a in the original text, right? So when the pub, when the well, Bible when the Bible was I don't even know I don't even know if he did did that. Yeah, well, if you, you know, yeah, all, if, if, you, if, you, if you if you if you if you read some of, of if you read some of his know. first religious journals that he published. He taught that, right? He taught yeah. he could really couldn't accept yeah. that Jesus was was God. And, we're, we're talking, and he and he and he and he add the the the, the, the New World it's Translation. God's, it's God's name, Jehovah. Absolutely, that's one of his names. Yes. I like to show you this. That got, that name actually appears thousands of times in the original Hebrew Hebrew scriptures. So our translation, we we just put that name back. That name is very important because it identifies who God is by name. And just, just I want to let you know, when you show me this, I want to listen to you, I want to respect you, and Thank I, you. I have like two more questions, and then I can let you out your way, and if we can, I don't oh, want to keep God. you all day. Anyways, um, John 17, 3. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. So he's praying. What person is he praying to? Is Jesus oh, praying to? Jesus prays to his Father, God. Yeah. He, uh, that, calls, he calls that Christians person, don't deny that. He calls that person the only true God. The only true God. Yeah, yeah. But if so, who's the, who's the only true God? God is the only true God. So yeah, here's the thing: here's that the, person, the Father, is the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. And the one who you sent, Jesus Christ. Right. So we but, have to take in knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. But here's the here's the thing: listen, listen, listen. He's not the only true God. But it says the person he's praying to is the only. This God. is the, this is the New World Translation, right? Does but it I'll, I'll, say the same thing there? It, 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 I think it will. But but it says the Father is the only true God and the one whom He sent, Jesus Christ. No, they're coming. To, they're coming to know you, the only true God, and they're coming to know the one whom you it, sent, it, Jesus it, Christ. And the one it, it says it, it doesn't say and the one that they're coming to know. I know, but that's what the scripture. That's what the scripture means. That, when that's you how read you. It in that's, context. No, that's how you're interpreting it. You no, to, no, no, no. Just, just I as think, you have given me authority. I'll let you over, talk. I'll let you talk. Just as you have given me authority, it is a prayer. Okay. Just as you have given me authority over all flesh, so He's given authority. God gave Him this authority. He didn't have it until God gave it to Him. Can, I, like, can I speak now? I just wanted to show you. Yeah, why it's yeah. Out. But it, but it, listen to what it says. It says they're coming to know you, the only, the true, only God. true God, and, and the one who you sent, Jesus Christ. Now yeah. listen to. So listen. we have to get to know so the two, only true so, God and Jesus Christ. Can I explain? Can I explain myself? So two things I would say to that. I see how they're separating yeah. the Father and the Son in the Scripture. That's not, that's it's a prayer. Imagine yourself praying to God. Let me so let me let me just you, let, me, true God let me let me just explain. Let me just ex Jesus let me just explain it to you. We 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 believe Christians. What Christians believe is. There is one God that we're exists. Christians too. Look, okay. What? Yeah, we fought. What, the reason why we're out here is what Jesus I believe. What I believe. Commanded. What I believe as a Christian is that there is one God that exists in three persons. So yes. if, so if Jesus acknowledges His Father as the one and true God, He is not disqualifying Himself from also being the one and true God. Why? Because they are one. That it's like if I'm one yeah, with the only, them. only true God. But He calls that person the only true God. So. If, for me to buy into this um, Trinity doctrine, which has, which is originally a pagan concept from, you know, it's, versus, it's Jehovah the Alpha and the Omega. We can. I'd love to go there with you. Is he? Is he the Alpha and the Omega? I would love to do that. I think you know yes. where I'm going. That's I why you don't want to answer. I know, no, I know where you're going. Because Jesus because I just answered it the other Je day. Jesus, Jesus calls himself the Alpha and the Omega in in in, in Revelations. He says, "I'm no. the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first actually, and the last." Actually, no, that was that's not how that's how that goes. I've had that conversation. I wish we really? had some time. Yes. I, I promise you well, I've had that One last in question. Detail. One last question I, I, I'll, sure. I'll ask you and I'll let you go. Sure. Did Charles Taze Russell uh, prophesy that the world would come to an end in 1914? He prophesied that he prophesied that basically that God's kingdom will be established in heaven and that certain things may come, come about. What was earth. those certain things? They believed at that time that they would go to heaven. So did, did he did he prophesy in 1914 that the world would come to an end? Did he prophesy that, that the world would be destroyed? Yes, in 1914. Not okay. only that, Charles Taze Russell, what he did, he owned a fleet of clothing stores. He sold all those fleet of clothing stores because he got ready for the world to end. If you just, he got ready to go to heaven. Yeah, he did, believed. He believed that. Why did he? Why did he? Why did he believe that he was going to go to heaven in 1914? I'd love to go, love to go into that, but that's like, that's gonna take so long. No, plus, you, plus, you, you can just, you can just, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to go deep in it. 
to just answer that simple question, why did he believe that he was going to go to heaven in 1914? The reason why is because he believed that the world was, that, that the, he believed that by reading the scripture, God was communicating to him that the world was going to come to an end. But the world, well, not, but, not the, but that's a big difference between going to heaven and the whole world coming to an end. There was certain things that. He so can you just answer from. that? Can you just answer that simple question? Why did he believe in 1914? He and other people who followed his theology was because going to go to heaven. That's, because that's when God, that's when Jesus was going to be enthroned as King of God's kingdom, which he was actually enthroned in that year, and a lot of um, so Jehovah, world so, world things that happened at that time also proved even further that 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 part is correct and so as your witnesses we teach that god is that jesus has been ruling as king of god's kingdom i get picture yourself a, an invisible or not invisible but picture yourself as a government just like the united states is a government uh, has a powerful army it's a government established in heaven jesus christ is and king. I, I got a feeling that you're trying to elude my question i'm not trying to elude your question yeah but but what i'm I what, what i'm saying what i'm what i'm saying is what i'm saying is you don't you don't you don't believe that in 1914 Charles Taze Russell said made claims that the world would come to an end Al if, almost so almost so he owned a fleet of clothing stores that was worth like three hundred thousand yeah. dollars and he sold them in, pre in preparation for the world to come to an end but That's it did not it did not you believe that right you've heard world, of that right yeah of course the world didn't come to an end okay so but so even if he even if he believed and taught that the world is going to come to an end there's so much for me to have to share and to properly explain myself to why that really doesn't matter. Well, wait, here, here in this, for, it, it, for the, let me just let me, let me just say this: it does it's matter. True. The reason why is because in Deuteronomy 18 it says that if a prophet, yeah, a prophet yes, if a prophet know. prophesies a, a, a claim, he never claimed to be a prophet. Well, he well he claimed to speak on behalf of God. Actually, that scripture says if a prophet claims to speak on behalf of God, and that prophet is, does not come to pass, that he is not a, that he is a false prophet and not to fear him. But Charles actually, Russell, actually Charles, if you look more in, in detail to what he said was going to happen, it actually did happen. No, no, the world didn't come to an end. So he, he, he didn't. He said he didn't say that the world was going. That's he, not. He did. I've, I've, it's I've, a little I've, more sophisticated. I've read, than that. I've read his religious journals. In 1914, yeah. World War Two, World War One yeah. broke out, and he said this is the beginning yes. of Armageddon. When World War One broke fine. out in 1914, he said this is the beginning of Armageddon. Yes. So much that so much all the Jehovah's Witnesses that followed him sold their businesses and sold their homes. They weren't Jehovah's Witnesses; they were Bible students. Well, they there's still there's still I, Bible students out there. By actually, the way. actually, they were called Russell Lights back then. They wasn't called Jehovah's Witnesses. Properly, pro pro uh, properly coined that, but they were their their official authoritative name was International Bible Students. So did he, did, did he did he make a false and prophecy? And there's still Bible students out there. My we're, we're my, my question to you. I'm mean gonna speak over you. My question. Did he make a false prophecy? Was it false? No. It wasn't. Make, it wasn't false. So it he, wasn't the prophecy. It's different. Here's the thing, though. It's not a big, a bit different. I think. I think it yeah. still applies to the day. You have prophet. You have. I you understand have some your your points, and I really appreciate your time. Also, me, your me, your appreciation for God's word. Let me just explain this, right? And I'll let you go. Some prophecies tell us the future, but what a prophecy is, it just in general, is somebody who who speaks on behalf of God. Right. If I, if I, if it depends I, for what definition of prophet you want to you want to take on. There's the, a lot. There's the, a lot that people. The, can, the point I'm the point I'm making in Deuteronomy 18, sir, it yeah. says that if a prophet claims to speak on behalf of God, and that prophecy does not come to pass, that he is a false prophet and not to fear him. And my fear for you guys is that you guys worship a false Christ. If we you look at, we if, don't worship anyone but Jehovah. If you worship a, you worship. If you don't worship the whole of who God is, you worship a false God. Jesus is the only and true and living God, right? We, we he believe, is one with the Father. The He's always existed with yeah. the Father. He I showed not. you words in the Greek. I showed you what words. I showed you, I showed you where it says that he was firstborn in all creation, only begotten son many uh, times. You have to, you have to not exist. Time, time. To listen, listen, listen to me. You're very sincere. And, I, and, and I'll, I, leave, I'll leave you with this one verse. It's John, John 6, 56 or John 5, 56. It says I'm that familiar I live, with it. I, I live because of the Father. So he basically acknowledges there that he lives because of that person, the Father. So I mean, you get a chance to, to read it. It's a it's a but, he, but, he, but, but Jesus he, but Jesus never said he was created by the Father. Nowhere, he lives. He, he lives by because the Father. He's also the firstborn of all creation. So you picture the, well, all we, creation. We, we, are, we, we already we already we already we already established that the word firstborn he, does not begotten, mean only begotten Son. He's the only begotten Son, and you said that he was Michael the Archangel in the Hebrews. No, I didn't say that. Well, you said he was an angel. 
I said that he was. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you believe that Jesus was an angel? It also says that Jesus has a God, and God can't really have God. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you said that he was an angel, but in Hebrews it says that the God, Father, the Father does, is never called an does angel. Does God have son. a God? No. When Jesus says acknowledges that person as his God, he acknowledges his Father. Whenever, whenever he's he a, says, "Let your will, not my will, take place." Yes. It's two complete. Just like you it's and two, I are it's, different. It's, it's, we're both human. It's two. But it's, we're not the same person. Here's it. Yeah. And I. And, and here's the thing. Here's Jehovah the, has the title of only true God. Gotcha. Gotcha. Jeho Jehovah, that person, the Father. But listen that's to what you only listen to God. what you just said, Antoine. You said they're not the I'm same sorry. persons. And I, I never, I never, I never made the claim know, that they were the same person. I know you don't make the claim, but the, my, my whole so, point is that that person alone is God. No one else is God. That's not true, Anton. And well, I, just, I just, I just, I just, I just showed scriptures. you in scripture. I showed you what Thomas calls Jesus God. I, I understand this. And I also you have to showed take you in Hebrews. the context of this. this and you, literally, this that knot, this this whole knot we've been trying to untie. It's going to take a lot longer to untie. But we don't have the time. It's, it's a big but, knot. It's but all Jesus crumbled, calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the he end, does, the first and the well. last. I'd love to get into that, but it, it says it right leave. here. It says it right here. I know. I, I'm, I I'm can show sorry. you. I'm sorry, man. I appreciate your time. All right. I, all I want you to do, guys, is just 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 do some research, and I I, pr I will pray yeah. for you guys. Um, thank you for talking to me. But nice Jesus perfect. is equal with the Father. The Bible yeah. teaches that. It if does you, not if, if, that, I'm sorry. It does. If, if you just do your it research, doesn't. you will see that. I've done, I've done all the research. The Watchtower organization has added to the text. There is no Bible in the world sorry, you just don't, that will, you that, just will, that will show you the same words in, the, in those scriptures that we just discussed. I wish I had the time that will agree you, with I the Watchtower. I'll show you the, the righteous justification for all of that, but I just don't have the time. You don't have the time? Why? Well, well, well you got to go. I have to go meet with um, friends and like i i mean that's all even more to explain but we were supposed to actually go in somewhere during the different kind of weather and so you know the other friends left we are we're very organized structured you know you guys we're, are we're very bring, we're it, bringing the kingdom that's one worldwide. thing i've seen jehovah's witness before and that, that's one thing i respect about you guys that you guys are always organized reason, that you're always the only diligent we're able to do that is because jesus is overseeing our work jesus, i don't i with all due respect i don't think jesus is overseeing your work Jesus is the one and true God. He calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it doesn't. I wish, I wish we had the time, to, but I have to go. It says it right here in it Hebrews, says, and Hebrews 22, verse 17, I believe. Let me leave you. Not, with not you. Hebrews. I'm sorry, Revelations John, 22. John 17, 26 says, "I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known." How is Jesus making God's name known today? All right, man. I just want you guys to repent. Repent and believe in the true Christ. All right. All right, man. Oh, man. I felt like, um, I felt like it went well. It was very obvious that, um, it was very obvious that, um, they, when I started to make points that they couldn't defend, that they started giving each other the eye and letting letting each other know like it's time to get out of here um especially when i went to the hebrew scripture um some of the things i feel like he defended he was very sincere in his defense he's like okay you're wrong about this person but when we got to hebrews 1 5 when it says that the father has never called an angel a son and he claimed that jesus was michael the archangel at that moment he kind of just made something up and i saw it in his eyes he was searching um and even though the, the main guy that I was talking to, the, the white guy, he was very, very strong. The guy who was listening, you can tell that he was very, like, into what I was saying. Like, he's never heard these things before. And everything that I was saying, he was kind of like, looking up in his iPad. And um, I just, I'm, I'm going to pray for him tonight. Pray that the Lord, like, would do a work and he just researched the things that I, I talked about. But it was a good conversation. Um, the other Jehovah's Witnesses that was there, they just kind of, like, got out of Dodge. But the dude that um, that I that I talked to the longest, he he was like, you know what, I'm going to defend what I believe, and I defended what I believe, and yeah, man, that was a good conversation. Hopefully, the Lord do something with it and, and penetrate their hearts, and um, yeah, they don't like when I talk about Charles Taze Russell's false prophecies. <laughs> but yeah, God is good.